Here you are. Welcome. I think the relationship between uh, Marie Antoinette and the old king, uh, Louis XV, was itself a complicated one. Oh, nonsense. There's no need to stand on <laughs> ceremony here. <laughs> he was there when she arrived at Versailles. He was hugging her. He was being physical for her. And all these, you know, like affection she wasn't receiving from her husband, but from the king. I think she loved and worshipped him, but he had a reputation for being a seducer of young women. Be careful, child. Papa Roy has a penchant for virgins. Ooh. Louis uh, the 15th um, was a notorious womanizer. And Madame du Barry, who is the latest in a very long line of mistresses. You old fool. You are naughty, but <sighs> magnificent woman. Mm. He had a great fear of getting um, sexually transmitted diseases, so he concentrated most of his wantonness, his lust, on young girls. Mumba prefers hot chocolate. Oh. Mm, just you wait till she's tried my coffee. Hmm? So, um, uh, Marie Antoinette at the age of 14, going on 15, um, would not, I don't think he would have found that a problem. <laughs> That's the holiday episode, <laughs> which Marie Antoinette very loved, um, and I did too. In the script, it was a kind of English fair. The way we did it is not really an English tradition. There was a piñata, and that's not English at all. Avec des miroirs flottants dans les arbres. We rehearsed dance, all of us. That was before we started filming, and that was fun. We are dancing English country dances, like folk dances from the, the countryside, from peasants' dances. And we had this incredibly enormous burning wicker man. A celebration of all things English! <laughs> est venu avec cette envie de Wicker Man, donc cette espèce de grande statue, un peu de, de briquet de broc et de branchage qu'on a fabriqué et qui brûle à la fin. It seemed symbolic. It's what would have happened in the countryside. And it gave us something emotional at the same time. So that, I'm on the brink of the world being on fire. I can either win everything now or lose everything now. So that was the idea for the fair. And the Burning Man, it came out of that. Five, six, seven, eight. There's this moment where the king, Louis XV, places his hand on my lap and the hand kind of wanders up. <laughs> He's already come on to her at that point of the story and uh, made it perfectly clear in more ways than one that he finds her attractive. What do you do when the king does that? You can't slap him in front of everybody. She just lets it happen because she can't do anything about it. And that is the moment when she understands that the king has become a real danger for her. I think that he thinks too carefully about doing, is shocked by it, and then does not feel safe in his company because she sees him as a predator. Action. So it's about brutality. It's about toxic masculinity. It's about a man that has forced a woman to do something against her will. And then on top of that, wants to show her that he can have sex with her whenever he wants, because he's the king. It's a turning point for Marie Antoinette in terms of her relationship with him. At that point in the story, Marie Antoinette and Madame de Barry have fallen out, and Marie Antoinette has publicly shown disrespect. The king is really pissed off with that. He's given an ultimatum to her. She went on here at the end of this dance. She thinks she has to acknowledge Madame du Barry or like pay her her respect by curtsying, but not publicly. But then exactly the opposite happens. So they're dancing and then everybody kind of vanishes and it's just suddenly Madame du Barry and her. It was already written in the script that there would be like a 
a Western standoff between uh, Madame du Barry and uh, Marie Antoinette. I mean, it looks like we could be like, but we're not. Because in Versailles, people didn't fight with guns. They fought with words and codes. It was definitely Sergio Leone. That's, that's the inspiration for that. It was a standoff. So we shot it on a big wide and a big close up. So there was a great, a great amount of historical military action going on at the time that if she does not actually pay attention to him and obey him, then he may well go back on his word in terms of the fact that he is meant to be a, or France is meant to be an ally of Austria at this point. There will be consequences for Austria. In this particular scene, uh, Madame du Barry loses power totally. I think this is, this is the second time she's humiliated in public by Marie Antoinette. Yeah, that was a, a relationship with fireworks, and I didn't have to make up much about that. Madame du Barry was the maîtresse en titre to Louis XV, and as far as she was concerned, she was the Queen of Versailles, hated by the Parisians and, and France generally because of her background. C'était une femme très élégante. C'était elle l'icône de mode avant que Marie Antoinette prenne sa place. C'était elle qu'on copiait. On était dans quelque chose de beaucoup plus démonstratif, forcément, parce qu'elle est dans une position qu'elle a à défendre tous les jours. Donc elle est dans la dépense excessive, dans, les... dans la couleur flamboyante. Elle avait une palette colorée assez forte, euh, dans des rouilles, euh, des orangés. Elle a beaucoup de bijoux. Une de nos références euh, visuelles, c'était Sophia Loren euh, dans certains de ses films. Madame du Barry and and Louis XV are very much in love. Um, they have quite an extravagant relationship. I thought I was going to lose you. You and me? Or all of this? <sighs> he had an affair with her for about 30 years and uh, landing on Madame du Barry uh, towards the end of his life. Perhaps there is a way I can protect you, my love. Madame du Barry's place is very fragile. Uh, being the favorite of the king, she is replaceable. So I think when Marie Antoinette turned up, this was a problem for Madame du Barry because here was the future queen of France arriving. Let's keep her in our sides, Provence. There's something to understand as well. Marie Antoinette was placed there by Choiseul, prime minister, and Madame du Barry was placed by Duc de Richelieu. And Duc de Richelieu and Choiseul are two different teams. They're big rivals. So even before knowing each other, Marie Antoinette and Du Barry will not get along because they don't belong to the same clan. Ready for your lesson? At first, um, I think um, Madame Du Barry is unsure where to stand with Marie Antoinette, she tries to befriend her, to get on her side. I can teach you the art of seduction. Teach me. Please, I must do my duty. Madame du Barry is one of the few friendly persons in Versailles, and she offers her help to Marie Antoinette to fulfill her duty to her husband. Everything Madame du Barry will do is motivated by her own reasons. Um, and I think before being a total bitch with Marie Antoinette, she tries to teach her how things are done in Versailles. Madame have been plotting to replace me since the day I arrived. You're either in their camp or mine. This time and Versailles, I mean, I, I, particularly Versailles was really cruel to women. This is also what Madame du Barry is trying to teach Marie Antoinette at the beginning. It's like, be careful of every move you make. Um, so much pressure, so much pressure on Marie Antoinette, but so much pressure on every woman in Versailles in, in different ways. I'm busy. And very quickly, the relationship is degrading, and uh, Marie Antoinette chooses the opposite side. 
Have Madame been filling your head with nonsense about me? And the moment Marie Antoinette finds out about Madame du Barry's past, she feels betrayed. You should have told me! Why? Why didn't you? My past is of no interest to me. And this is where you see Marie Antoinette's character coming through, very strong and determined, age 14 and a half, when she chose not to speak to Madame du Barry after they fell out. And she can't imagine to continue her friendship with her. She just can't understand why a soon-to-be queen of France should hang out with a former prostitute. She felt that she'd been misled by the court and misled by Madame du Barry. I'm an Austrian Archduchess. I'm the Dauphine of France. Who are you? And then Madame du Barry will find help from the king, and it becomes more serious. Until she publicly acknowledges me in front of your family, you will be spending your nights alone. As we know, Marie Antoinette is very stubborn. She has declared war on me, Mercy. I shan't be the one to surrender. And that her, her mother forced her to apologize, but it took her a year to do it. But, you know, they never resumed their friendship again. Congratulations. A battle well fought. She's an incredibly strong woman, a model of resilience to climb the social ladder like that and stay in her position for quite a long time. I think we have more in common than you realize. We live in a society where being too feminine, too sensual, too sexual can be a danger. We're two women trying to survive in this vicious world. And here I had to be pretty and sexy and strong at the same time. I think this character taught me a lot. Good luck. I'm a big fan of her now. <laughs>